got rid of them. Yeah, so they they got rid of the benches. But, uh, That's right. So Who are they? Uh, the Castro There's Benefits District. Oh, oh them. The okay. Okay. The ones that you can't share. With the support of Mumsy, but Mumsy was the ones who actually removed them. It was the Castro Benefits District. And a lot of it, the reason was because these fuckers over here who live in the condos were complaining about the people who were sleeping and hanging out on the benches. I see three people and homeless people. people. No, it's not just no, those. All, they, they all the gay-owned businesses here that uh, are <laughs> right. you know, discriminating against poor people. Right. No, I agree, but, but but they were a major part of it because they went to the... We were at a meeting where, at one point, where they were complaining about the people who were sleeping. Like, one person said, I don't like coming out in first thing in the morning and seeing somebody asleep on the bench. Like, too bad, asleep on the bench. The person's not bothering you, the person's not harassing you, the person's asleep on the bench. How is that something that should be that, that should be legislated against or have benches removed because someone's sleeping on it? I came here one, one morning, it was like a Sunday morning. Pat Wiener was running across the street over here with his camera. Take pictures of how much we got here. I'm sure. And I waited around and he had to come back by here and the cops came there. Two squad cars over here. Right. Have you been going to the CBD meetings? No, I don't. No, they're open to the public. Because they're really, yeah, they're open to the public. And I is, is there public go. comment? I think we yes, should. I, think I posted should about that. I, you might have yeah, seen it. Yeah, I saw it. that. Okay, so, good. No, I think people should go. It's just that, you know, honestly, I don't always have the this, this strength to go and listen to that crap because these these people are just filled with bigotry and hatred. They wa I, what channel do they crap. watch? <laughs> and, you know, it's really about economic cleansing of the Castro. That's really what this all comes down to. They want to economically cleanse the neighborhood so that it's only upscale people here. And they don't care if they're queer or straight people, as long as they're upscale, you know? And that's what I think it really comes down to. And we got to be clear that that's what's going on here. It's economic. It's all about, you know, and, and, and what we need to be screaming is, is economic justice. Everybody has a right to public We space. need to rework the justice system because we're already voting okay. on civil rights issues. No, Why are we voting on civil rights issues? Well, it's the injustice system. It's never been a justice system ever in this country. You know, so the reality is we need to be here to say clearly this is our neighborhood too. We have a right to sit here, to stand here, to play guitars here, you know, to hang out here. No matter what we look like, no matter what our socioeconomic class is, no matter what our sex orientation or anything, we have a right to be here because public space means everybody. And once you start restricting one group, you can restrict another and another and another. It's a slippery slope. And we've seen that. Years ago, it was the drag queens and the hippies. I remember when I was, when I I was a teenager. I used to hang out in Philly in this park it called yeah. Rittenhouse Square, and the upscale neighborhood, the, the upscale neighbors around the park didn't like the hippies and, and the drag queens, and they didn't like the fact that gay men late at night had sex in the bushes. So they were always calling the cops on us, and I started out as a teenager hanging out with the hippies, and then I eventually started hanging out with the drag queens because I was doing drag by then. That's what we're fighting here. We're still fighting the same attitude, and it's really sad that it's coming from queer folks. It's really sad that a queer supervisor and a group that has queers on it, the Castle Benefits District, and merchants in a queer neighborhood would be waging the same kind of war that was waged, waged against them 40, 50 years ago. It just, it, it just proves what I've always said, that the oppressed become the oppressor. That seems to be the history of America. The oppressed become the oppressors. Well, a lot of this is the white gay men. Would you guys all like that? Yeah. 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 So, but I still think it's a class issue when it comes down to it. Well, they use families, don't they? they don't they use their families and they say, I don't like that dildo shop, even though that dildo right. shop's been there of decades. And the families will move in. It's the same with the cannabis community. It's a civil rights issue, too, where a school moved in near HopeNet and they had to look, close down after they'd been there and over. 10 years. And, and, and for queers to be using the save the children argument, considering our history with saving children from us, Anita Bryant, Jerry Falwell, the moral majority, all those campaigns against gay rights bills in the 70s, it was always, we got to protect kids from gay rights, from two men or two women holding hands, from two men or two women kissing in public, from teaching homosexuality in the schools, blah, 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 blah. Why are fucking queers using the same argument, the exact same argument, we got to save children? 
from nudity. We got to save children from homeless people on benches. We got to cut me a break. Well, the Bible, all it says is two men laying together should be stoned. So smoke weed when you have sex. I guess then you won't be disobeying the Bible. So they have the right to legislate what they're offended by. Yeah, no, it's hard. You know? So people are offended by the sight of someone sleeping on a bench here. So they get to have the. the they get to have the, the, the Castle Benefits District remove the benches because they're offended. So, how is that? Why are they privileged enough to be able to, 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 to get rid of what they're offended by, but I'm not? You know, it's just, it's so problematic on so many levels. Yes, reclaimed wood, like it's very uh, sustainable, full of concrete. Uh, weighs about 300 pounds I and it's uh, adhered to the plaza with uh, uh, construction adhesive. Nice. I heard that the <laughs> original benches cost $40,000 to build and put in and $1,800 to take out. Yes. How, how much would you estimate your bench project? Cost? $30. <laughs> $30. And labor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scamming. Um, would you like to say anything else about uh, this, this space and, and why, why we're here today? Yeah, I mean, the history of San Francisco has gone through a trajectory of different movements, right? So before this was Harvey Miller Plaza, it was indigenous space at one point. It was Earth space. Um, it's all kinds of space. And so the statement is, you know, in the spirit of someone who honored the public, who honored public space, and who also honored the right to convene the public, because Harvey was actually against sit line laws, um, or so we've been told. In, in media, um, you know, we're here um, as someone who's born in San Francisco at Plaza to stay here for a while. I think the city has a legacy that's better than diesel jeans right behind you. I think it's a legacy that's bigger and better than um, <laughs> um, the legacy, you know, of many people who got getting filmed with someone with glasses. <laughs> And I think so. the overall message is that, um, you know, I know for us as activists, queer uh, activists, that uh, community needs to uh, be put as a priority over commodification of the area, <laughs> the plaza, the space, of yes. people. And so that's why we're here. That's why we're doing this. What would you like to see yes. happen with the process? Um, I'd like no. to see it be reclaimed <laughs> by the community and used for the community. And I would like the uh, people currently occupying the Castro to take the time and reflect on the history that which Carmen touched on and actually appreciate the fact that we have public space to congregate. So, um, can you tell me a little bit about what's going on today? Um, so, yeah, we are here in response to the removal of the benches in Harvey Milk Plaza by Scott Wiener and Mumsy. Um, the rich queers taking over the Castro. Um, rich white queers taking over the Castro. Um, so, in response to that, uh, Community Not Commodity slash Hockey Pride built this bench um, and we've installed it here in the plaza. Well, great. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, how you constructed it? Yeah, so the bench is all reclaimed wood. Um, so basically what I did is I, um, and we, I should say, we uh, built the frame and, you know, the, the wood here is just wood glued together pretty easy. Um, these bolts are eight inches. They go into the legs here. These legs are full of concrete, giving the bench a weight of about 300 pounds. So um, it was hard for us to get it here. It's going to be hard for them to remove it. Um, and the... Then the legs are actually um, adhered to the closet using construction adhesive, which is pretty uh, pretty effective at keeping things in place. Great. So, um, why is this issue in particular, you know, symbolically important? Well, I think for me personally, Harvey Milk. One of my favorite things by Harvey Milk is um, it takes no money to respect the individual, right? And he said that in response to like, you know, uh, respecting the queer youth. Um, and so removing the benches actually removes the public space for homeless queer youth to aggregate. And to do that in a plaza named after Harvey Milk is pretty ridiculous. So um, I think it's really important that we just say, you know what, no, like we are actually going to value community over uh, modification of the plaza or yeah. public space. What do you think people watching this video should do about this issue? I think people should uh, take it upon themselves to build anything to replace anything that is taken away from us by government, by capitalism, by corporations, whatever, stand up and fight back and do it by being really creative and confronting the systems of oppression that are keeping us all from accessing or having access to a life full of meaning and joy. Has there been a problematic change in the gay community since like the 70s? I mean, I would say here in the Castro, you know, I've only been in San Francisco a couple of years now.
in almost two years. Um, and I would say the problem that I've seen here is the gentrification. Uh, we have a lot of money coming into the Castro, forcing queers, young queers like myself, or middle, young, pseudo middle aged queers like myself, out of the, I don't know, uh, out of the Castro. You know, we can't afford to live here. And it's happening all across San Francisco. So we have a choice. We can let it happen and act like everything's fine and go about our lives of consumption and whatever, or we can actually fight back and do it in ways that build community and create uh, relationships with people that we care about. Is the, the Castro District is, you know, known all over the world. Is it is it now welcoming to, say, uh, younger gay and lesbian people, to women, to people in lower economic classes? I, I think the Castro now is welcoming to young people who have money to spend in the Castro. Um, it's certainly not a safe haven for uh, Midwestern queer like myself who was brought up in an oppressive environment and wanted a safe space to come to. I don't think that's really offered here. Anyway. It's certainly changing towards the negative, in my opinion. What do you think the main thing we should do to, to change that around? I think we should just build it. <laughs> Let's just create it. Let's just make it ours. It is ours. Let's just take it. And so today is part of that? Yes, we built it. We built it together as a community. Sounds like a familiar slogan. Yes, exactly. I know, right? But it's true. We actually did it. <laughs> Whether you're homeless or not homeless, whether you're white of color, we are here to reclaim this space for everyone because public space belongs to everybody. Yeah. That's, that's what public means. And for some strange reason, the Castro Benefits District, the merchants of Upper Market in Castro, Scott Wiener, and other assorted groups don't understand the word public. Perhaps we should send them a link to a dictionary online. Do, do, do some people want to do that, maybe? Yes. I'm serious. Yes. Maybe we need to send them a link <laughs> to a dictionary so they understand what public means. Right. Now, this is public. We are the public. And we are in this space enjoying it. Right? Yeah. We're going to enjoy it. We're going to have music. We've got some popcorn up here. If anybody wants popcorn? And this is a soapbox. Because I don't know how many people are aware that many, many, many years ago, Harvey Milk would set up a soapbox out there on the plaza, and he would give speeches. He would talk about issues. Okay? So everybody's welcome to come up here and stand on the soapbox and grab this thing and, make, and, and say whatever's on your mind. Okay? Because this is about public and all the people. So there's no celebrities here. We are all the same, and we all have the right to speak out and be here. And I encourage you to sit on the ground or lie on the ground because San Francisco has a lovely sit-lie law. And as much as possible, we should always defy it. Even though technically it's allowed during a demonstration, demonstrations are exempt from sit-lie, but still the symbolism of people sitting and lying is still a useful tool. So Berkeley, by the way, just rejected sit live. Yeah. yeah! So it seems that once again, Berkeley turns out to be more progressive than San Francisco. Except for nudity. Except yeah. for nudity. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, <laughs> we're about to join them in an anti-nudity band, too, but that's a whole other story. Anyway, I want to get off this, because I don't want to monopolize this. Anybody else want to come up now and say something? Yeah, I would. Come on. Come on up. Um, so, okay, great. So my name's Jean. I live around the corner. I live two blocks away. And, you know, I can see that there's this uh, growing concern of people. Oh, yeah. Do you want to grab it? Sorry, I've got coffee. So there's this growing concern of people who live in the neighborhood that, you know, maybe sometimes people hang out here who they don't like or who make them, you know, vaguely uncomfortable. And guess what? We're not all always going to get along. You know, that's why this is called the public space. Uh, it's not just for your friends. It's not just for the people who are exactly like you. So I think it's incredibly immature and ultimately counterproductive for people to try to just make the public space go away because occasionally they dislike the people who uh, hang out here. So boo on Scott Wiener, yes on benches, and let's all have a nice dip. Thank you. Can everybody 
you hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, I am not an amazing public speaker, unfortunately. No, I am. Um, we love you, Carmen. <laughs> but um, one of my tasks as a movement builder and one of my, what I've always thought was my place in this world is to bring uh, visibility to that which is often invisible. Um, so while we gather here in public today to celebrate community, to celebrate public space, to celebrate uh, really universal love for all humanity on some level, um, even Scott Wiener maybe, I don't know, um, uh, in a cosmic sense. Um, one thing that we often leave out of the celebration is the folks who can't make it for different reasons. Um, and so right now we're taking space in the name of uh, people who have lived on the streets. And realistically speaking, a lot of them can't be here with us right now. Um, folks who have died of HIV and AIDS over the years, uh, whose imprint um, as a very small child growing up around this area. I actually remember watching that, and I know a lot of you here uh, were adults and integrally involved in that struggle. Um, folks of color often get left out of social justice movements. Um, and behind me is a sign that has both the symbol of um, what we call woman and the symbol of the transgender people. Um, and so I want to say today that in the spirit of unity, um, that a, a whole circle has all of its people. Um, I could maybe stand a date correction on this, but when we talk about LGBT and when we talk about queer, um, it's important to remember that a T is a very strong, integral, um, and backbone part of this movement. In fact, um, the Stonewall rights, which are the benchmarks often of what we call LGBT history, were not the first queer rights. It was uh, arguably um, across the history of time, because there's probably many riots and many insurrections, but it was the Compton, Compton's cafeteria riots in uh, well, the 1960s something, early 60s. 66. 66. There was one before that. Uh, was there? Uh, in LA. In LA. Compton's <laughs> here in San Francisco was um, the. It was many different things, but it was the revolution of transgender women standing up against oppression. Um, and so when we talk about community and when we talk about LGBT, um, it's important to have all of our brothers and sisters in mind. The Harvey Milk LGBT Democratic Club. Yay! Yay. So, so Harvey's club is historic, but also the whole idea of a sit-down is historic, actually. Um, the first sit-down strike uh, 75 years ago, this December, at the uh, at the auto industry in Detroit, when auto workers decided not to go on strike and leave the plants, but to occupy the plants and shut down production. And that was a really important moment. They occupied uh, the plants, Chevy uh, and Ford, uh, for about three and a half months before the auto industry gave in and gave them what they wanted. And it was 62 years ago, this, or, I'm sorry, 52 years ago this year that the first sit-ins took place in the South, um, in North Carolina, when four brave young men sat down at a Woolworths counter and demanded their right to be served a cup of coffee. And as the saying goes, they should have served that cup of coffee because it ignited a, 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 a movement of sit-ins, as they were called in the 60s, um, throughout the 1960s. So we're using the historic tactic to make the point um, that we have made for decades and decades that the streets are private, is our public space. The yeah. streets are our space. Yeah. And we deserve to be able to occupy the streets in the ways that we want. And those who cannot stand should be able to sit in public. And those who cannot live inside and have to live outside should be given some measure of comfort. So I'm so glad to see you all here today. Uh, this is a monumental struggle, and this is only part of that struggle. So let's struggle on. Thank you. Yeah.
Uh, and I think it's very important to remember that this is not the first time this has happened in this space. Some of you will remember that in the 1990s, we had benches here that were removed because there was a small, disproportionate number of people that complained about undesirable folks that were hanging out here. We together can build a world where sitting in public space, no matter how much money you have or uh, how much power you have, um, uh, doesn't exist. <laughs> like it's easy to, to reclaim public space. Um, and I think together we can build that. Um, I'd also like to say uh, one of my favorite quotes from Harvey Milk that actually inspired the building of this bench woo, woo, woo. by community, not commodity. Um, we, one of the, the quote is, uh, it takes no money to respect the individual. Harvey Milk said that. And to literally remove benches that would allow people with no money <laughs> to have some sort of uh, participation in public uh, is, is an affront to that quote. It's an affront to Harvey Milk. Uh, Health care, so when they get sick, they can't afford to stay in their homes. And we're, we're getting more and more people, 2.1 million foreclosures in the state of California since 2008. 2.1 million families facing, uh, at risk of losing their homes, and many of them actually do lose their homes. So what happens when you lose your home? Well, if you're lucky enough to have family you can stay with, you go stay with family. If you happen to have lots of cash, you can pay for a hotel and stay in a hotel. If you have lots of cash, you can rent another place to live. But the, the, rent, the rental market is skyrocketing in this city, too, because of all the people that are being foreclosed from their homes, thrown out of their homes. So a lot of people don't have a place to go. So where do they go? They try to go to a homeless shelter. Well, guess what? The homeless shelters have long waiting lists, months, to get into a homeless shelter. Sure. So where do they end up? They end up on the street with nowhere to go. So how can someone who doesn't have another place to go avoid sitting down or lying down on the street? It's not possible. So these benches can be like a lifeline for people. If you need a place to just sit down or lie down to take rest, it seems like a basic human right to be able to take rest, to yeah. sit and even if you're not sleeping there, just to be able to sit and talk and, and socialize with other people. So um, what I would like to do is I would like to reclaim the plaza here and there from the Castro Upper Market Benefits District. Why should they get to decide what happens with this plaza and that plaza? The public should decide, not the merchants of the area. So let's take it back. How can we do that? Well, first of all, we can go to their meetings and we can demand that we have representation at their meetings. If we can't get representation at their meetings, then we go to the Board of Supervisors and we demand from the Board of Supervisors that the benefits district system require participation from community members who are not necessarily business owners or property owners in the district. One of the next actions we could do is there's going to be a, the lighting of the Christmas tree. Oh my God. The merchants light the Christmas tree on the day after Thanksgiving at 18th and Castro. Maybe we should set up a little space like this with our, our, our own chairs at 18th and Castro while we're lighting the tree. Yeah. To remind them that not everybody in the neighborhood shops till they drop <laughs> for this season. That there are many of us who can't afford to shop even if we wanted to. Not that I want to, but even if we wanted to. There are a lot of us who can't afford to, to shop and can't afford to shop in this neighborhood especially. So maybe, what, how do people feel about that? How many people would be, would be up for uh, being at the Christmas lighting. Yeah. So maybe, um, uh, is everybody here um, on the Facebook page no. that we had? So maybe we need to set a sign up. I'll send out a, I'll put a sign up sheet around so people can put their email addresses. Another thing would be the annual Harvey Milk March on the 27th, uh, which the Harvey Milk Club does. And maybe we should have a presence there, even though we're not going to protest the Harvey Milk Club, because we love the Harvey Milk Club. But I think maybe we can bring this issue there, too. Um, since there'll probably be uh, politicians there and everything. So maybe we need to do something, maybe signs or something, um, at the Harvey Milk March. Uh, there are roving bands of uh, skinheads that be up on homeless. And the Park Station Police Chief does nothing about it. As a matter of fact, they may be participants on some level. So kids, 
can't feel safe in Golden Gate Park. So they have to pick other places. And they pick other places, they're more likely to get arrested. So if you're gay and homeless, you might imagine that there's only a couple of places that you can be safe. Uh, maybe Polk Street, maybe not. But here's probably the safest place for you. And you're probably more likely to get beat up by a skinhead than anybody else. So this is really about life and death right here. This is about life and death. And uh, shame on Scott Wiener. You know, like I say, Scott Wiener's a dick. Anyway. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is James Kiancini. I work in Senior and Disability Action, and we work with seniors and people with disabilities. And one of the, the critical parts of this is like older folks, people that have a harder time getting around, sometimes they need to sit down. People who are sick need to rest also. It's just, it's not a crime, it's not a great demand, is it? To say, look, just have a little bench where someone can take a rest. Uh, and it seems like, to me, in my assessment, and I've seen this a lot in this town, it's whatever issues of homelessness or poverty or exclusion come up, you know, when people start making a big mess about it and a stink, they're all, oh, we're angry because there's homeless people here or there's homeless people. It's like they're not concerned. It's like people are not concerned that poverty exists. They're not concerned that homeless, they're not troubled and irate that homeless children and homeless elders and homeless people exist. They're just upset that they have to see it. You know, they're upset that they have to walk by people that are living in this because it calls into question. All these different things. It's like, no, the economy's not working great for everybody. Okay, there's some big problems here. And anyway, I, I just I think it's it's pretty appalling. It's pretty it's pretty disgraceful that they take out something as simple as benches. The problem is not benches, the problem is houses. And the problem is housing and not enough. Three thousand dollars average rent, isn't it something like that? I mean, I saw a sign the other day, it was $5,000 for a two-bedroom with no parking. Who can pay that? You know, pretty soon it's going to be, I, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen to my wonderful town here. It, uh, it breaks my heart, you know, to see this just little by little, and, and we have to fight, we have to stand up. We have to sit down and be counted. We have to fight back because we can't just let them have it. We can't just let have the repressive forces like the Scott Wieners and the, the people that don't really even, even say anything about it about poverty and homeless people and, and seniors. Or, they're not even used to thinking about it, okay? Much less doing anything about it. They're not even used to, like, acknowledging that, that these problems exist. Thank <laughs> you.